In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And if you've ever, if you've been listening to the podcast for any amount of time, you'll know that I talk a lot about the subconscious mind, how it affects your actions, how it affects how you feel, how it affects your results, how it affects your relationships. It's, it's one of those things that you, for me personally, so I'm speaking from personal experience, I can't get enough in terms of trying to learn how my subconscious mind is affecting all areas of my life. The beauty of it is, is that once you begin to learn, once you allow yourself to kind of go down that rabbit trail of discovering that inner dialogue and how it affects your life, you can really start making drastic changes in a relatively short period of time. That's the beauty. It's a really short period of time, relatively speaking. That's been my experience. And that's what I want for you as well. So today I've got a fantastic guest that we're going to go deep in the art of learning about your subconscious mind. We're going to go into some of the trainings that he has. But without further ado, let's talk about Joseph Drolshagen. Joseph is a personal and professional development coach. He's the founder of the IFGT Life Coaching, which I know what that stands for, and I hope you'll, you'll go into what IFGT stands for. That's super cool. So he's also the creator of the SMT Method, which stands for Subconscious Mindset Training. And in that training, he helps you to get more into alignment, manifest your dreams, and transform your life. It's been described as the law of attraction on steroids, which if anybody's ever followed the law of attraction and kind of gone that, down that rabbit trail, of, there again, the mindset piece and all that, imagine that on steroids. And that's the type of conversation we're going to have today. Joseph has also been featured in Fox, CBS, and NBC. He's been named one of the top business coaches in America for two consecutive years in the New York City Journal and Disruptive Magazine. His mission is to help you become unstoppable. Imagine that. Let's let's have me stop talking. Joseph, come on the show. Help us, man. Let's let's figure out some of this subconscious mind stuff. But anyways, Absolutely, welcome to the show, Joseph. Randy. Yeah, welcome to the show, man. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Excited to be here. Fantastic. So I went through a lot of the high level bullet points, right? Which is fantastic. Congratulations on all the accomplishments. Talk about, let's, let's go into your, your story. Where have you been, what you've discovered, and kind of what you're working on now. Let's, let's kind of just give everybody a little bit more uh, context as far as who you are. Yep, absolutely. So, so uh, I grew up in, in, in Detroit, Michigan, to a very low-income, blue-collar family. There were five of us children, and my mom and dad stayed married to death in part. And, um, and they, I watched them my entire youth struggle. I watched them struggle financially. I watched them work exhaustively trying to, you know, get enough money or get, have more money and things like that and stuff. And, and I remember at nine years old, I went to a friend of mine's for the weekend and his dad pulled out a $20 bill and he gave it to us. He goes, take your bikes and ride up to Dairy Queen. In my family, we'd have to save up to do that. So when I got back home, I was like, man, it was really noticeable, the energy difference. And I thought, man, you, you people aren't living right. And I'm not going to live how you live. And then I went through, you know, my teen years and I got into adulthood and I, uh, I repeated those same behaviors and I didn't want to, I didn't want to live like that, but I, I didn't know. And so at 22 years old, I became a student of the works I do today. And, and Randy, back then, if something came easy to me, I thought I didn't deserve it because I didn't work hard enough for it. You know, and, and that was the mentality. And so I became a student and starting to understand those things. And it's been a continuous for over three decades now, where I'm still today a student of this, you know, and understanding it. And, and I've gone through a lot of uh, uh, like individual and group therapy. I've gone through coaching programs, self-study. I've taken book after book after book, and I would create like ex uh, experiments to do based on the contents of the book and stuff. And I could never figure it out. And then I started taking coaching programs and, and working with a coach. And and I didn't know it at the time, but what it was is is uh, they were like trying to create mini me. So I became like the person that I was being coached by. And I walked away from those programs thinking there was something wrong with me because I didn't get anything from that. You know, I'm, I'm the guy, one of the guys who took the, the secret when it came out. Right. And I, I, I bought the, the, the DVD 
or the, the VHS rather, because I'm that old. And was, I found a study guide and I found something else with it and stuff. And I really dove into it for almost a year straight. And I was probably the most positive person I knew then in my actions and how I projected myself outside. But inside, I was still that same person. And and, and after a year, I, I, I chucked it all and thought, man, there's nothing, you know. And again, I'm walking away blaming them. But my real belief was there's something wrong with me. You know, and I started going through that. And then I started, came about a, a coach, and, and this helped me make a difference, who who wasn't trying to be, create a mini me out of, out of me. They were trying to help me find the best aspects of me. And so I got a, some out of that, but I still had all the subconscious conditioning we'll talk about in a minute going on and stuff. And at the same time, I was raised that a man gets a job, supports a family, and hopefully lives long enough to enjoy some time in retirement. So I, I, I bought into that hook, line, sinker, and I got a job right out of high school. And I ended up, I ended up crossing over into, into white collar, which was one of the first people in my family to cross that, you know, the, from blue collar to white collar. And not that there's anything wrong. I have a lot of pride in, in being from Detroit and blue collar and auto mecca and all that stuff. But, but so I crossed over. I'm the first person in my family to get a, a, a degree, you know, a college degree and stuff. And I did that. And so as I get into white collar, I get lifted, lifted, lifted. And, and, and over a 27 year career, I ended up as a vice president of sales for at multiple organizations, leading great sales teams, leading terrible sales teams, you know, and then eventually helping companies in bankruptcy get back to profitability. But I never liked what I did, but I got confusing between that conditioning of a man gets a job and that I was good at what I did. And so many people talked about being proud of me for, you know, building this career. I never wanted it. It wasn't like I set a pathway and this is what it just unfolded like that, you know, and, and, and I was miserable to the point of, of, of gambling, you know, and, 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 and abusing alcohol and things like that, you know, as a way to keep on that roller coaster of that life, you know, and through that process, I, I went from sales where I was, when I was on the road in sales, I would do three to 5,000 miles every single week building territories, thinking I was doing the right thing. And I'll tell you one instance is, is I have one son, he's 28 now, I absolutely adore him. And when I say that, it's coming on the cusp of, I was married back then and we had two pregnancies where, the, where the, you know, they, they were born at 24, 25 weeks and they'd live for hours or maybe a day and then pass away. And then the third one was my son. And then we experienced two more pregnancies like the first two. So when I say my son is such a blessing in my life, I, I mean, that's where my thinking is coming from with that. And you would think with him being such a huge blessing, he would be number one in everything. But on his first birthday, I wasn't home to celebrate his birth. I wasn't home to celebrate him. I was in Indiana trying to build a sales territory because I thought that's what a man was supposed to do. And that was such, it was so hard even thinking back on it now, Randy, it, it really like, I can never get that moment back. I can never get that day back, you know, and I have to live the rest of my life knowing that. And that's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about what I'm doing to help, come, you know, individuals, organizations to rapidly scale, but do so in a manner to open up free time. So nobody else has to miss those precious moments in their life. Like I did, you know? And so, so as I started doing this, I, 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 at one point came across the total mindset, which is our conscious mind, our, the, you know, the knowing side of, of, of the, the thoughts we entertain, the, the, the words we use, who we hang out with, what we read, what we watch on TV, all that stuff's in the conscious mind. And then there's a subconscious. And the best way I can explain it for understanding is, is there's like a motherboard in our subconscious that I call it, that hosts all of our programming, our experience, our patterns, our habits, our belief systems. We don't even have to experience something firsthand to it being embedded in that subconscious. If somebody told us something and they told us enough times, it becomes embedded in that. And what happens is the knowing part of what we want it in life is in the conscious, but the doing part, that subconscious is what triggers brain waves to the actions we take or don't take. So if there's misalignment between those two, 
and we keep running up against it. And, and, and eventually what people do is they become the victim because they don't understand how they're causing their experiences to be what they are. So they start blaming outside influences, um, uh, interest rates, uh, the economy, like all kinds of other things, competition, all kinds of other things, when it's really that, that motherboard. And the reason I know that and the evidence I have for that is we see in a down economy companies, organizations that, that rise up quicker than they ever have the whole time they've been in business. And then we see companies and organizations who struggle even in a boom economy. So when you look at that, so as I started understanding, as I under, started understanding that piece of the subconscious, which I really came about it truly from Joseph Murphy's book, the, the uh, unconscious mind or subconscious mind, it, that's really what started going, oh, so then I ended up getting another certification. I ended up understanding how that plays a role. And we, we hear a lot of things about comfort zone, but all of that conditioning is what keeps us in our comfort zone. So we end up taking the actions almost, not almost, unconsciously living by those patterns and those paradigms and those habits and belief systems. So once I start understanding that, the next thing I ran up against is there's all these coaching programs available that tell you, we got your roadmap to success, right? We got your success plan here. They don't even know me or anything about me, but they have my success plan. And what happens is I took some of those programs and, and, and they, you know, they tell you, if you follow A, B, and C, you'll get to D. And it's a one size fit all plan. That less than 1% of the people following those plans ever achieves the same, you know, the same level of success the person who put it together does. And then that started bringing things like even the secret into play. It, it works perfectly, but it doesn't work as a one size fit all because we're not a one size fit all. We're unique individuals based on our conditioning, based on our desires, based on a whole slew of other things that were unique. So when I developed the SMT method, I developed it to work within that uniqueness. So ultimately what it does is it lays out the pathway for like if, if you and I were working together, you'd have a unique journey based on you and your conditioning and your desires and all of that. So now as I did that, and it kind of unfolded for me over, like I said, you know, three decades. <laughs> but one of the things I like to say, and it's true, is like I'm the guinea pig for everything I teach today because I've been through it myself and gotten to that other side. You know, so, so you know, and even like, you know, in the introductions and stuff, it, probably an older thing there, but like 2024 is the fourth year, fourth year in a row when I've been selected as top 20 business coaches and for 24, I've been selected as number one spot on that top business coaches. And it's, it's not me. I'm not this great person or anything. It, 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 it's what I do and the impact I have and the SMT method has on people's lives. Love it. Love it. That's just why I'm so excited about this conversation. I've got so many <laughs> things going on in my mind right now, right? So my subconscious and conscious is all communicating all at the same time, which is going to make this so much fun. So what I want to do is unpack that a little bit yeah. as far as go back a little bit. I don't know if you knew this or not. I don't know if I shared this with you when we were getting connected or not, but I'm actually, I live in Indiana. So I, okay. I yeah. So the Midwestern blue collar that, yeah. you know what I mean? That I totally understand that. Resonance, That's been yeah. a huge challenge for myself. Like you said, it's not good or bad. I don't like using those words. It's just different. Meaning that the, the uh, mentality, the philosophies, right. And so then becoming aware that there was something, a different opportunity, right. Yeah. Different ways of being different ways of thinking, but understanding or realizing, and that's where I don't want to share what I believe about it. I want you to talk about the motherboard and kind of unpack that a little bit more about the stories about the the just you know the non belief that we have in ourselves to be able to take the actions required to reach the desire that we're actually looking for. I just would love you to kind of unpack that that story motherboard that's really keeping yeah. us locked into this life that we just don't like at all. Absolutely, absolutely, Randy. And one of the things is um, so I've, I've worked with almost a thousand clients over the past decade, so I have a lot of success stories and, and things like that. You know, I um. Um, but one in, for instance, is I worked with somebody who had 13 year high, $7.5 million business. 
All they wanted to do was get to $10 million because that would impact their life, open up more freedom, you know, hire teams, things like that and stuff. And in the 12 months we worked together, their business went from 7.5 and almost toppled over $23 million in 12 months. Now I have other stories that have done, you know, as good, better and things like that. But that's just one that's near and dear to my heart because of the person, when I met them, they were so busy. They said, I don't even know if I'd have time to talk to you every week, you know? And, and, and so, and, and also in that one year, it was the only year of their adult life that they took five weeks of vacation in that same year that they experienced that growth. And now they've been maintaining that level, you know, you know, trickling upward from there and stuff, but they've been maintaining that level. In fact, I have a phone call with them today. Um, for the past six, six and a half years or so. So it's not like it went up and then dropped back down, you know? And so, so with that, now, when I tell people that a lot of people will go, well, that's BS because it's unrealistic. It's not even realistic. Somebody could grow that much. You know, if you look at the way I grew up and what I do today and how I live my life today, but also like how I've been able to bring this outwardly, not that I developed it. I believe that came from God, you know, but, but that I've been able to be where I'm at now living the life I live. It's not realistic. When we look at the things we want in our life, they're not realistic based on where we grew up or what money we have, you know, what's in our bank account or or things like that and stuff. It's not realistic, but we want those things. And so what happens in that transition between what we want And that conditioning, the conditioning is what determines it's unrealistic based on our patterns, paradigms, belief systems, all of that. So somebody that when I talk to about that and they go, well, that's BS, that's unrealistic. That's not somebody I can help. But if I have somebody that's going, man, here's where I want to be. This is, I know I, I want this so badly to experience life like this. And they have the knowing of what they want and they don't know what's stopping them from achieving that, that's somebody I can help. But one of the things that any client, you know, when I, when I talk to people before I start working with them, I'm deciding like, I want them to understand me, see if they're comfortable with me, if what I do, you know, they believe would help them or not and stuff like that. But from my side, I'm looking at, does this person have a beginner's mindset? Does this person looking at everything is like, that, that can't be true. I know this, I know this, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. (laughs) <laughs> because that's somebody I can't help. So what I tell people, a beginner mindset isn't automatically switching our belief over and saying, okay, I believe this my whole life. Now I'm just going to believe this because I, you know, he said it. It, it. It's what can I take from this and add to what I already know? That's a beginner mindset. And that makes a difference in there. So the conditioning, you know, a lot, I mean, the conditioning could be our, our finances for a lot of people. It can be relationships. It can be like the, the what our potential is. There's people that do not believe a business could ever grow outside of 15 to 25 percent year over year. And that person will never experience anything outside of that. So that's how strong that conditioning is. And so often, like I said, we're, we're living unconsciously that we're not even aware that that's our belief system. It's just automatically connects to it. It's a self-sabotage pattern is how I like to communicate it to be right. So you get, you reach your threshold of, of comfort, you talked mm-hmm. about comfort zones and all that kind of thing. You reach that level of comfort and you start pushing up against it, right? Think of it as ceiling. This is how I vision it is as well, or anyway. So I'd be curious what your thoughts are, but you start to push up against it, but then that triggers, I, I get triggered, right? We all get triggered by somebody says something, somebody does something, you hear something, you feel something, right? And it starts to try to bring you back down into that perceived safety, into that perceived comfort zone, yes. and then keeps you just muddling through life, right? You just kind of keep going through the mundane stuff after yeah. stuff after stuff. You mentioned, and it is, I just want to point this out as well, that you're like you're the guinea pig, this thir- three decade journey. I'm the same way. I'm self-taught. I've tried to, and that's how I've learned is I will learn something new and I will try to apply it. I'll get a result good or bad. I mean, I don't like using that word, but positive or negative, right? Good, you know, just the result. And so then you can just pivot and make a decision to move forward, try something else, that type of thing. So that's been my journey of trying to understand yeah. that un- the awareness, the awareness of feeling that trigger when it's happening, the mm-hmm. faster I'm able to do that in real time, 
the sooner I'm able to take control of it to then make different decisions to keep moving forward. Does absolutely. that resonate? Yeah. Is that oh, resonate yeah, absolutely. You? And you know, yeah, going back for a second, there is a couple of things you said is, is one of them was about that uh, self-sabotaging, you know, self-sabotaging can, can show up as procrastination. Self-sabotaging can show up as, as far as getting built up to that 150 miles an hour with the old, you know, thoughts of massive actions, exhaustive efforts is what's going to do it. And all that is, is really a hope. You know, we hope that if we are busy enough for long enough, it's going to come together. And a lot of people exhaust themselves and end up with strokes, heart attacks, medical issues, dis-ease of multiple types, you know, disease, and, 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 and never achieve what they're going after, kind of doing it that way. The other thing is, this is one of the things I found. All the things I did by myself never really got me the gains. What got me the gains is when I was working with somebody who understood this process and understood the mind, total mindset, understood those things. Because even right now, we're, I'm prepping to, to launch, I don't know if it's going to be this year or beginning of next year, but launch an institute to certify other coaches in the SMT programs. I've never done that before. So that I've never done it before. I work with a coach. Because I'll run into some of those patterns, paradigms. It might be a different level of them, but I'll run into them again, doing something new where they can help point them out where I may not even notice them on my own. You know, so as we're going forward, that's one of the huge benefits of having assistance where I wouldn't even notice why things were like they were, which puts us into the victim mode, which means we're blaming the, you know, the, the, the conditions outside of us. But there's been people who have excelled with the same outside conditions when they get the mindset into alignment. So having somebody there who understands it, who doesn't have a one size fit all type of, you know, process to it and stuff can really help gain ground quicker, which is why I can say and, and have achieved and have, you know, almost a thousand clients as examples of you can rapidly increase your business from where you're at today and what you're doing today. And I help them to, to achieve that. That's awesome. And so I, I call it winning within. So you've got to win within in order to win without. When I heard that the, for the winning without part, meaning I never really put that into terms as far as without just means in your outside 3D experience. So winning within, it's been, and I say this a lot on the podcast, and I'm going to say it again today. Folks, you probably have heard me say this a hundred times, thousand times, and I'm going to keep saying it, but it's the hardest work I've ever done in my entire life going inside, working with me, meaning it's challenged me in ways that I've never been challenged before personally. And so, but I will tell you that from that effort, I've been able to achieve a lot more like you're talking about in a relatively short period of time, which is also fantastic. So that's been my experience. And so obviously it depends on everybody's, you know, it's not like you said, it's not a cookie cutter, one size fits all type of experience, but that's just been my experience. So I want to go into the idea of just being busy to be busy. The idea of people thinking that, okay, if I just go do, do, do all the stuff, right? I'm just, my calendar's packed. I'm just busy from sun up to sundown, but I'm not necessarily getting anywhere. Go into that. You mentioned that a couple of times so far in this conversation. Just go a little bit into more of that as far as like, why that is a hold up and hang up for people to accomplish bigger things in their life? Yeah. Um, before I do, when you talked about it, it's funny that you said that because I talked to a lot of people who say that, like it's hard work and stuff. And I, I honestly, Randy, like I, I haven't, my, it hasn't been my perception of it. Because I got so deep into struggle, it was a relief to get to understand what going inside and, 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 and the proper type of work to do going inside. Now, I wouldn't say I, have, I've, I haven't wasted time, money, and effort in, in some coaching programs and things like that that I went through. But even there, I learned what, what I don't want to do, you know. So, but yeah, it's been, it, it, it's been, and, and for the, for the results that have come from it, it's been so worth it to do that inner work. You know, that it's almost like enjoyable. And that's one of the things I love about the SMT method is it's, it's based. We come out of the gate developing that dynamic vision. And then as we do that, it's just opening that up. You know, it's, it's going to cause us to bump up against that programming that's holding us limited so we can shift that. And then that opens up more of the vision. So it becomes like exciting bumping up against those things because we know another part of that vision is going to show up as a result of that and stuff. 
Does that make it sense? To be fun. Yeah, it's well, life starts to become fun because you can it, start. It does. Yeah, you know, it becomes like a game. It's like you can, yeah. you're in control. You start to be in the driver's seat versus being a spectator. Um, yes, it's like you're down on the field playing versus just sitting at the top of the of the bleachers, complaining that why isn't so and so is doing this and doing that. It's Absolutely. just it's a totally different experience of life, which I highly encourage everybody listening today to, to try it out. And that, yeah, that's yeah. where this, yeah, I, that's been my, once again, that's been my experience. So yeah. I'm curious what your thoughts there. And, yeah, absolutely. And, and so based on your original question with that though, as far as the busy, you know, the go, go, go and trying to make it happen that way. And stuff, it's, 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 it's just exhaustive efforts, you know, and there's coaching programs out there that'll show, you know, if you, if you're not willing to take exhaustive efforts and, and massive actions and trade off your life, then you're not going to get what you go after. And, and that has been one of the things that have strengthened me to go, no, that can't be true. And I've lived with that to go forward. And it's funny because a lot of, a lot of business owners, uh, professional sales, you know, realtors, insurance, whatever it may be that I work with. One of the things I have to do is get them to slow down a little bit. And in developing that vision and putting energy, putting the energy into the vision is we have to kind of slow down on that doing 150 miles an hour through life. And the reason it's necessary to do so is when we're doing 150 miles an hour, we're doing all the do-do-do is a massive, endless, exhaustive to-do list and things like that. And so what we're doing is we're putting blinders on to seeing opportunities and ways of things showing up that could be easy that could be in flow. And we've all experienced those things we call coincidences, right? Where something just, we happen to overhear something and it answers something, or it gives us direction into what we're trying to do that makes it easy. We can't plan for those things, but we can get into alignment to more regularly repeat those coincidences and have things showing up that way. But we cannot do that when we're doing 150 miles an hour. Agreed. Love that as well. So that's where I want to dive a little deeper into the the SMT method. So you keep talking about uh, the vision, right? The planning of the, uh, that's the beginning process. And without that, you almost become, so it's the, it's the old saying as far as like, if they tell you to go look for a red car, you're going to see them everywhere. Versus when you just, if you're just going to go out and go out in autopilot driving around, you're not going to notice those things. So opportunities, my argument are everywhere to improve yourself, to improve your business, to improve your relationships, to have great conversations like this today on this podcast. Like there's opportunities everywhere, but if you're not aware of them, so getting crystal clear on that vision, it sounds like is the first key that you talk about within the SMT method. And so I would love for you to take a few minutes, take us through as much as you possibly can about the vision. And so if somebody is out there listening right now going, yeah, you're right. He's full of crap. He doesn't, I mean, there's no way. How can you do get more and do less. That 100% goes against everything I've ever been told, taught, believe, but they, but they're curious. They're like, okay, but tell me more. That's the person I would love for you to kind of address today, kind of with, with Absolutely. that thought of, of the vision with the SMT. And one of my all time favorite quotes is by Wallace Wallace. And he says, if you are not consciously choosing to be rich, excellent, and healthy, then you're unconsciously choosing to be poor, mediocre and unhealthy. And when we're living in the comfort zone, when we're living by that programming of that motherboard in our subconscious, and that's calling the shots to the brainwaves, and we're just going about it over and over and over, day after day after day, and doing it when we're in that mode of, okay, if, if, if something isn't working, work harder at it. You know, when we're following that kind of, we're living unconsciously. So the vision is what brings our desires into full conscious view. And when I develop a dynamic vision with a business owner, we look at their business and what they want their business to look like, what size they want to grow that business, but also what impact are we having from having the company at that, you know, the, the organization at that side? How does that impact our relationships? How does it impact our freedom of life? How does it impact our health and our well-being? You know, because they have a, a, a trillion dollar business and, and you're on equipment for your health to breathe you and stuff like that. Or you don't have relationships of people to enjoy that with, you know, or you don't have any free time because you're working endlessly and building it. Uh, there's no what joy is there to that? Why would anybody want to have a business that way? 
if we're doing that unconscious thing, we'll live like that without even realizing we're doing it. But at some point, that realization is going to hit us, you know, and it may be too late at that point. So when I look at the dynamic vision covers all of these things and, 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 and it's, it, it's based on science in that once we in developing that vision, we can't then go out and find that vision someplace. We have to come from that person in that business. So we get the vision. It's very clearly defined into all the areas, even, even in like business owners, you know, uh, what is the ideal client? look like you know how many you know how 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 much time are you working in in your business and that's another big one how much time are you working on your business versus how much time are you working in your business and part of that slowdown that i experience with almost every business owner is we getting them on the way we allow them to to release some of the time they're spending working and things like that is to get them working get them to qu- stop working as much in the business so they have more time to start working on the business and doing so. So it's really all encompassing of that. And so then once we have that vision and it's defined and it's built up and powered up, and I'll tell you the, 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 the one person I talked to about with a $7.5 million business, all they, they, their vision was to get to $10 million. That's all they wanted to do. You know, I worked with another person who had a three hundred thousand dollar wholesale company, and all they and they, they were relying on the line of credit to cover their costs versus the revenue they were bringing in. And all they wanted to do was get to five hundred thousand dollars a year because then they could start nickel and diming down that line of credit. And so, in building the vision, I worked with my clients on. We ended up in that area for him. We ended up building it to like seven seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. And, and it lit him up. He got excited about it and everything else. And in the second quarter, when he almost hit that number, now that became his motivator to build that vision. And he went over a million dollars. And in that one year, he ended up going from 300000 to $3 million in his business. And so that, that, that vision, you know, ultimately, you know, this is ultimately – we can be pushed by our pain, the misery of how we're living and the things we're doing and everything. That, that can be a, a huge driver. And it is a huge driver for us. But on the other side is once we have that vision, we can now be pulled by that vision into opening up, which takes away a lot of the effort of, of doing the works and things like that. Because now instead of being pushed by our pain, which isn't fun experience, like I've experienced so many times, it's never been fun. But when I started doing it with the vision and letting that lead, all of a sudden it did become more enjoyable and we become more surprised. And it's like, oh, my God, I can't believe this even happened like this, you know, and and, and we have more of those moments of that excitement into it. So that's the purpose of the vision and how I utilize it with my clients to help them quickly scale. That's awesome. So if someone's listening and they're like, OK, I need to begin working on crafting my vision for my business, or even if it's just a personal life, can you give a little bit of a few bullet point list ideas of kind of where to even begin? Is it sitting down and with a sheet of paper and journaling, or is it like you said, a coach potentially, right? But is there just a, some nuggets of wisdom that you can share with somebody I mean, that's just, like, okay. Just, I- just, yeah, actually, absolutely, Randy. And that's a great question. Just, just to kind of spark it is start putting thought into what, what you truly want. If it's your business, what do you truly want in your business? If it's finances, what do you what do you want finances to look like? Not, not, stay away from how it's going to happen. Forget about that. But just what is that picture of that? What's the image of that look like? You know, and as we start defining that, as it, through through the program when I work with people through the SMT programs, is is we do write it. We write it because it brings another level of commitment to it. We're committed at a deeper level than when we're just thinking it. But as we build it and have it written, we have something we can go back to over and over and over and put on. If we keep it up in our mind, things fluctuate every time we have a thought. You know, the same thought can come out a million, you know, unlimited ways and stuff, just depending on where we are in that moment emotionally and everything else. So when we commit to it, it gives us a place where we can then go back to and be reminded of that, put, get into that place of that. So I use imagery as far as what it looks like and, and things like that in that vision, but also what's it feel like to be that person living that life. And as we start building that out, and and I have a, a special gift for everybody that we, we can go deeper into this for anybody who's willing to. But yeah, just, just start leaning. The first step for me was just leaning into, instead of looking at my troubles, 
and looking at my problems to start looking at what do I want? What do I truly want to experience? I want to impact millions of people's lives with the works I do. And I don't, I didn't define how it's going to happen. So with the coaching I'm doing now with expanding it and bringing more coaches on to work with me. But then when I start certifying coaches, now I'm opening that up to have an impact. There's no way I could have just through myself. And not only for now, but even after I pass away, that Institute can continue having an impact on people's lives. I could not have come up with the structure for that. So now I've got two questions and I need to think which one I want to ask first. So the first one I'm going to ask, I'm going to put a pin in my mind for the second one here. So, so as we get back to the, to that second one, but the first one is how important is the use of imagination in terms of coming up with this vision, this, this clarity, right? So I think that as, and I'm, once time, once again, I'm, I'm just excuse my experience and people that I've been in contact with as well is that we're kind of beat out of the idea of imagining, being creative. You're kind of just you're you're given a task, whether it's a job that's like you mentioned, doing A, B, C, and then you're going to get D result. Versus being creative, using your imagination. How important is that to do use that with that that vision that you're talking about? Yeah. So of our five mental faculties, the two I rely on heaviest through the SMT method is one imagination. If you look at our conditioning, though, from a very early age, remember, like when we're like kids and, and, and you wanted to be a police officer in the morning and a doctor in the afternoon, you put that on and you really were that you were living that. And then in the afternoon when you decided a doctor or whatever it may be, you put that on an astronaut and you live that and stuff. But then we start going to school. And then we're taught, you know, pay attention. We're taught in math class, like, you know, that, that, you know, we both do the same problem. We both have to work it out the exact same way to get the answer. So if in your creativity, you're able to get that answer in less steps, you get marked down because you didn't show all of that work and everything. So we squelch imagination. We squelch creativity in that. So that's why I can say right from day one, my, my clients experience a change in things because in opening that up, we got to bump up against those patterns and those paradigms that tell us that our imagination isn't good. We got to live realistically. You know, we got to live from here, you know, logically. We got to take logical actions and figure out what they are and the to-dos and everything else. And, da, 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 da. And, and, and so we squelch that. And so we have to open that back up because that's really where that vision comes from, it's our imagination. And then the other one, as I'm on this subject, is intuition, our connection to all that is. When we're going based on our strategies of our, I will sometimes refer to my logical mind as the Antichrist, Randy. <laughs> because I, if I'm living in my strategies and I'm coming up with my to-dos and I'm listing all the hows and the way everything's going to happen and everything else, I'm just limiting me to what's between my two ears and I'm shutting off everything else. When I can get outside the how and really put my effort into defining that vision, then we have those insights built in. It's built into every one of us and it works perfect, but it's only as loud as our willingness to hear those directions. And so it's tapping into that. The awareness, it goes back to awareness again, being able to hear that intuition, be able to use your imagination, giving yourself permission to do those things often, getting into practice of doing it, right? And then putting it into action. So one thing that I see a lot of times when I'm communicating with folks about trying to break through some limiting beliefs and that type of thing is they always get stuck with the question of, well, how am I going to do that? How can how, so it's like they create the vision, they want to start a business, let's say, or they want to take a business from X to, you know, a new revenue goal. So then it's like, they get stuck on, well, how, how am I going to do that? And then they don't move forward because they get stuck. It's like a repetitive <laughs> playing over there in mind, right? It's like, I don't know how, which means I can't move forward, which means you see what I'm saying? They just get stuck. Help me there. Talk to me about. Yeah. How do you know how many that. visions, great visions never even get a single action taken into them before they're forfeited because of what you're talking about right now. And we, again, we are so programmed in our culture. We're so programmed that you have to have the answer and you got to figure it out, you know, and, and, and things like that, that it's in our conditioning to ask for help goes against our conditioning to allow assistance to come in goes against our conditioning. And one of the things I'll tell you in my coaching is every Every client I work with, I talk to them up front and tell them, 
I don't have your answers. But God has seen fit to design through me this SMT method that has helped almost a thousand people to realize the how and then experience living it in their life by applying it. And that's really the way it is, you know, so many, and that's why I meant what I said earlier. And I don't mean to knock anything else, but like for me, it, it, you know, it, it it wasn't a good avenue to experience is, is those things that tell you, we got your roadmap, we got your plan to success. We got your, you know, the, you know, one of the things is, 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 is you follow A, B and C and you're supposed to get to D, but so many people are pushing themselves because somebody told them they have to do these things to be successful. So part of the process of the SMT method is helping every individual to define systems of accelerating habits that work based on their uniqueness. And an example of that is you ever see somebody do a social media post, Randy, a social, like a live, and you can tell they're not comfortable and then and, and they're, they're getting stuck in their words and they're nervous. And, and you get like, how long do you watch those? I, I skip over them because I feel bad for the person doing it. Now, you ever seen a social media live where the person is, I mean, they're at home in front of that camera, man. They just flowing and they're energetic. And, and how long do you watch those? So instead of everybody having to do social media lives or this or that or whatever, what I do is I help my clients to determine what are those things that they do that light them up? Because when we're lit up with what we're doing, we're automatically more authentic. So we're more real the way we come across. We're automatically more energized where we, you know, we do works and stuff like that. When we're following the ABC, we're doing exhaustive work that tire us out and, 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 you know, beat us up and everything else. But when we flip that and we find what those habits are that we, that, that, that fit us, then as we're doing those things, we're actually energized. And I'll, I'll give you an example in my own life. When I was in corporate America, if I had to be in the office two days after five o'clock, I was, I was beat up. I was ticked off. I felt unfair. I felt like, you know, they, these guys owe me something and I just couldn't stand it. There's times I'll do my work here in my office all day. And then I, right next door to me, I have a studio and I'll go out there at like eight, nine o'clock at night. You know, I'll come back to the office and I'll start doing videos and I'll do it till two, two thirty, three o'clock in the morning sometimes. And I get done. I'm so energized. I can't sleep. In that place, being in that alignment with that vision and being in that place and flowing like that, we cannot help but to experience tremendous success in the results that we experience. Staying in and being involved or being allowing yourself to have permission to stay in your zone of genius and discovering what that is through the process, right? Um, mine was just to kind of put a little bit of clarity for myself was just a creative person. I loved to draw when I was a kid, when I was little, I would take comic strips, newspapers. I don't know if anybody remembers newspapers these days, right? So newspapers, comic strips, I would redraw them on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. My mom would just give me a sheet of paper and I would just, just love recopy it. Anyways, the point being is I was just a very creative person. My time in the corporate world was a struggle too. being told what to do, when to do it. I was in a sales organization as well and being told how to show up and give the script and ask for this, all that stuff that went totally against who I am to the point where I've discovered this podcasting place. I love this. I love being creative with you. This is a conversation, but at the same time, we have to be creative with the conversation, creating the brand, doing the point being that I've stepped in or I've tried to step into and find out what my creative genius is to be able to do it at a higher level than maybe some, right? Because like you said, you'll, you'll find some podcasts that maybe that's not their lane and maybe they just need to figure out what that lane is. With that said, do you have any advice to help folks trying to figure out how do you tap into that I do. zone of genius? I do. Yeah. How do you, before how do, I do, how do you though, discover I have to what say. it is? Before I go, I have to say that you you are at home. This is this is your wheelhouse. Thank you. Like you can tell, you're you're energetic. You're, you're smiling the whole time we're talking, and, and, and you're just you're really good at hosting as well. So this this is your wheelhouse. And and yeah, one of the things I'll tell people is again, if you look at our conditioning, our conditioning will tell us we have to do all these things that 
we never even experienced results, but somebody may have told us that who we consider a mentor or somebody, you know, influential in that. And so we start following all these things and, and 90% of them we can't stand doing. And one of the keys I use is lean into what feels good. Hmm. When I am helping somebody develop systems of accelerating habits, if it doesn't feel good, it's, it's not the right lane. But if it feels good, that person doing the social media, you doing podcasts, you know, if it, 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 when it feels good, it, it feels, it just feels good. And then everything can flow from there. But I know I've had experiences in my life where I've tried to do things that didn't feel good and they weren't in my wheelhouse, but I thought I had to for some reason in order to get to the result I wanted to get to and everything else. I, I never got results out of those things. Nowhere near I do when I'm feeling good. So what I tell people is if, if you're getting ready to do something, it's not that you don't want it success. It's not that you don't want to be successful. We always blame ourselves and say there must be, like I did, there must be something wrong with me or this must not be meant for me or, you know, this and that. But it's not that ever. It's, it's not in what we want to achieve and the deserving and all that stuff. It's the manner we're going about doing it. We're trying to, if we follow, you know, there's that old analogy that we're conditioned that if you want something, find someone who has it and do what they did. You'll never get the same thing they have doing what they did because that works for them. So if you want that, allow yourself to find your own pathway. And the way I do that, the easiest way I do that is leaning into what feels good. You know, there's sometimes when I'm here at the office and I'll start getting in my head and stuff like that. And I'll leave here and I'll go out and play pickleball for two or three hours. Or I'll go out to uh, to, uh, to to Chattanooga and hang glide and jump off a two thousand foot mountain top with a with a hang glider, you know, and or a motorcycle. Or I mean, you know, and, and there's times getting out of here is the most productive thing I can do, rather than feeding into it more and picking it up more. But what we do is we 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 are conditioned again. Everything goes conditioned, but we're conditioned again to put up with the pain that it is right now to get the reward on the end. But. So few people ever achieve that reward going through it like that. And if you really think about it, why would we want to build a business and make it exhaustive efforts, massive actions, high pressure, everything else to it, if we could do it easily and enjoy it, enjoy the unfolding of it? Because once we get, I've experienced this over and over and over in my own life, but others, once we get to that peak of where we want to get to, it doesn't take long to get boring and we find another peak. The gentleman that went from 300,000 could only think 500,000 and hit $3 million a year. He came back to me last October and he said, man, I'm really frustrated. And I go, why? He said, I'm, I'm trying to get to $5 million and I just can't do it. Something's blocking me. And I, I couldn't help but start laughing, not at him, but start laughing. I brought him in with me on the laughter as I said, it's funny. Two years ago from then, you know, two, two and a half years ago, whatever, you were frustrated because you were only doing $300,000 a year and not able to pay your line of credit and relying on it. Now, in a short period of time, you're at $3 million a year and you're frustrated about getting to five. And he started laughing. He goes, oh, yeah, but that's exactly what happens. Once, you know, the human condition, once we achieve something, we want to do something else we want to do. I have a lot of business owners I work with who start a business, they build it up, whether they keep it and hire people to operate it and stuff like that, or they sell it. And then they have something else they want to do, you know, and it's that, it's that human condition that we have to create, to strive, to succeed, to experience that, you know, the, the enjoyment really is in the growing of. Once we get there, we always look at our life, you know, and when I was in, in corporate, I kept looking at, man, one day I'll get to retire and I'll get to really enjoy life. And we spend all that time in that misery. And, and how many people pass that we hear of pass away within the first six months of retiring from a place? The joy is in the journey. And if and that's one of the things that the SMT is, is, is stapled to is, is experience that process and joy, not just that end. Fantastic. This has been a fun conversation. I knew it would be. It's been educational for myself, hopefully for, for you, the listeners. It's been that way as well. But you've shared a ton of wisdom, ton of gold, gold nuggets, 
but I'm going to try to prod you for one more. Can you think of anything else within the SMT or anything else that you're experiencing with a particular coaching client or anything like that? Just some wisdom to share with the listener out there. Just words of inspiration to help them maybe start crafting that vision, right? Digging into their creativity and their imagination. I'm going to leave it up to you to what that could be. But at the same time, just leave everybody with a, a little bit of inspiration and then definitely give them a place where they can learn more about you. Uh, yeah, please share all that with us. That'd be fantastic. Absolutely. And, and being such a great host, man, we got to cover a lot of different areas and stuff. But the one thing I'll say is we have uh, uh, we, we have this perplexity to to judge ourselves harshly for our past. And that can really tie us up deeper into the conditioning and, and stop us from, from really letting go, from really soaring in our life. And a healthy way to deal with that is understand everything that happened in my past had to happen in order to grow me to the person I am today. Without those things, I wouldn't be here with you right now. You know, I talk to you, you know, like, it's unrealistic a kid coming from where I came from would be having this conversation with you, would have made it in corporate the way I, you know, where I would be an ordained minister and get to deliver Sunday services to some awesome facilities and things like There's, no, It's unrealistic that that would happen. But for a long time, I would look at my past and I would use that as judgment that as far as I can go because of what happened and what the outcome was. And I've worked with a lot of business owners who have a great business idea, but they're stuck in a job because they don't, you know, because of what happened there, Gentleman, one gentleman opened a car wash and he checked it out to the best he knew how to then and stuff like that. And then he opened it and everything and found out that he's not on any business traffic routes for people to come by. So not that many people. So he ended up closing that within like seven or eight months. And now I meet him years later and he's got this great business idea, but he's had it for five years and never taken an action into it because of that car wash. So when we walk through that and I was able to help him see that that car wash, what, what the, his lesson in that was, was to do his due diligence before he stepped into it to check everything out. And now he knows that now he's running a multi-million dollar business based on doing this, just based on that perception shift. So if, if we look at our past, instead of using it to hold ourselves down and, and away from what we desire, just use it as a lesson, understand what it taught you, and then go forward based on that lesson that you got there. And if you, our, our, our failures or potential failures from in the past can become stepping stones into launching our greatness. Fantastic. Joseph, where can people learn more about you and the services that you provide? We talked about your coaching and training and all that kind of stuff. I just know that people are going to be like, okay, I need to get a hold of Joseph. Where, where, tell me where, please hurry. <laughs> yeah, and I, ha I have a, a, a special gift is, is, is anybody that please. wants to have a conversation. I don't, I don't do a sales role. I don't do, I, I, I work this whole business. I don't do ads and things like that. It's, it's based on attraction rather than promotion. So I don't promote this stuff, but I know the right people are attracted and continue and referrals and things like that. So I, anybody can go to coachwithjoey.com and schedule a 15 minute call. And we covered so much in this hour. I mean, it seems like it's been 10 minutes, Randy, but anything you got questions on, anything that you feel a little stumped on, if I could help you at all, if I can help you identify what the conditioning is that's coming and give you some things to help you with that, I'll do so. And then during that call, if you remind me, I'll give you a, a, a fourth package set of uh I call them meditations, but you don't have to sit quiet in the room. I mean, you can, but you can listen to them while you're driving. You can listen to them at the gym. You can listen to them while you're doing other things and, and really start sparking these things towards the vision and things like that. And I'll give it to you on the call that we have and stuff. And again, it's coachwithjoey.com. So folks, so first off, Joseph, thank you for showing up and so much value to the listeners, to me to everyone out there. This has been so much fun. I knew that the conversation going into the subconscious mind, trying to figure out what's the triggers, right? I use that word triggers and imagination, just all the things that we covered today. This is going to be one that I think that folks, you're going to want to replay often and kind of take it in different chunks, different pieces, because each kind of little segment there with the different questions, I think could be a, an own episode of it by itself, right? We could go so much deeper into those areas. So if you are experiencing some pushback, meaning your subconscious mind might be triggering you at this point saying, okay, is this really true? Is this real? 
but at the same time, you're having those thoughts, but then you're questioning. It's like, okay, well, maybe it is. That's if you are having that thought, that is where you're at the position where you can take some of this information that we're sharing with you today and start begin implementing some of the ideas that we're sharing with you today and start beginning crafting that life that you may not even realize is even possible. I'm living proof. Joseph is living proof. And obviously he's got several clients and some credentials to back up the fact that what he's working with, with this SMT method is absolutely could possibly impact you in a life, in a way that you just, you can't even fathom. So go to coachingwithjoey.com, correct? Coachingwithjoey.com? Coach, coachwithjoey.com. Coach, coachwithjoey.com. I apologize for not getting that right. Coachwithjoey.com. Go there, get signed up, jump on a call with Joey, Joseph, and have fun discovering who you truly are, what you're truly meant to be. And when you step into that flow and that experience, I'm telling you, life starts to get to be fun. And when life starts to get to be fun, you get to be able to start having fun conversations like we've had with Joseph today. So, man, I appreciate your time today. This has been a ton of fun. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get you back on. We can go a little bit deeper in some of those uh, those topics that we talked about today. Oh, I, w- I would love to, Randy. And just one last thing I'd like to add to it is like what you do, man, it's, it, it's awesome. And you doing it the way you do it is really awesome. And anybody listening to this, if this sparks you at all, you know, leave a comment or things like that. You know, we all know somebody who could get – who. The, would be valuable to hear this information, share this with other people, like help Randy's and and his mission of what he's putting into this thing, help him to spread that and and to the people who need to hear it and and be a part, an active part of getting to do that. Like this has been such an honor to be here with you and have this conversation today. So much appreciated. I appreciate that as well. So yes, folks, if you could help, that would be appreciated for myself, trying to help as many people as I possibly can learn these things that we aren't necessarily taught in the systems that we're involved in, whether it's a corporate system, education system, family system, right? It's just a different way of thinking, a different way of becoming that once you catch it, once you kind of see it for the first time, you can't unsee it. And then what, like I said, it's like you just start to take the driver's seat of your life and who knows where you can take that. So go out there, have a fantastic day. I look forward to bringing back the next wonderful guest with you again very soon. Until then, bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.